catfishing, all right? For you folks on this side, if you want to want to hear about the catfishing, I have to come down to use that here. It's not something I can show very well in the tank. If you come around the other side here, we're going to talk about catfishing. And as I'm coming down, I'll tell you a little bit about what I know uh, concerning the population of catfish in our river. The Susquehanna River is literally polluted with channel cats right now. The Fish Commission, in order to manage the fishery, they do electroshocking. And when they were electroshocking, they uh, got as many as 100 channel cats per hour. Okay? That's a lot. Channel cat fishing is a blast. We use our bass gear. It's a great thing to get youngsters involved with. Take them out there and catch a lot of fish. They don't have to concentrate like you do in bass fishing. They're not going to get hung up a lot. Uh, basically, you put the rods out, you let them sit, put them in rod holders. The kids can be playing on the deck of the boat, whatever. You get a bite, you tell them they catch fish. And they will catch fish. <coughs> Channel cat fishing, uh, we were fortunate enough to team up with a company this past year called Team Catfish. They're based in Oklahoma. And I'll try to make this story short for you. Uh, a sponsor that I was using had a fiber bait that I thought was fantastic. We caught a lot of fish on it. It was a great bait. He went out of business. So I called Ken Freeman. Uh, he runs the Bass Pro Shops Cat Quest series. And I said, hey, here's what happened. He said, yeah, I heard about that guy. He said, you sit tight, don't do anything with any other sponsorship. I'm going to have a guy call you. Within an hour, Jeff Williams of Team Catfish called. I explained the situation to him and, you know, trying to get sponsorship, trying to get help with my business, etc. He said, look, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to put product in your hand. You're going to fish with it. And then if you believe in my product and you feel you can promote it, then we're going to talk. So that initial conversation to me said a lot about the man and the company. <coughs> well, needless to say, we got the bait and we went channel cat fishing. So I fished it four times. One time I, I had it out there and it was real windy, tough conditions. And I'm fishing two baits, the old bait and the, and the new sudden impact by team catfish. And we had a lot of wave action. They, they were missing a lot of fish. I couldn't really get a, a good comparison. The next time I went out and I fished it and I sat up in a hole where I knew the channel cats were and I fished the bait side by side, okay? And the sudden impact, hands down, beat the other bait. So I called one of my guides and said, this is what I'm thinking about doing. Come on out, I want to show you this bait. So he came out and went back to that exact same spot, set up exactly the same way. Where on the first trip, I had the sudden impact on the right side. I now reversed it just to make sure the bait wasn't blowing in a, in a, in a particular situation and gave it an advantage. So now we got both baits fishing side by side again. The short end of it is sudden impact was 10 to 2 when you average the trips together. It was better than the other bait, which remember, I thought was an awesome bait. The, the bites were harder and the fish were bigger. So now we fish sudden impact. This is the only bait I use. Channel cats are scavengers. They're going to eat everything. Worms, uh, chicken liver, chicken gizzards, shrimp. A lot of guys take their baits, set them out in the sun, get them hot and stinky and all that, and then they're dealing with that blood in the guts, and I used to be one of them. Guys, if you're doing that, I see you nodding your head. It's not necessary. Trust me on this. All right? Sudden impact is a fiber bait. I like to fish it on my bass gear, all right? I like to fish a seven foot medium heavy rod because the bulk of the fish we're gonna catch in the channel cats are gonna be 12 to 20 inches. If you get a 12 to 20 inch channel on this rod here, medium heavy action, Johnny Moore's Bass Pro Shop series, and that's it's gonna be a lot of fight, all right? It's a lot of fun. <clears throat> now, I'm fishing 17 pound test floor carbon line. I like the fluorocarbon, we've already discussed it, less visible, all right? Now, the other thing I do is pretend all that other stuff's not here. I'm using 17 pound test fluorocarbon, so it's easy for me to use that as my leader. You can go lighter, the problem is if you don't want to mess with a net, you go to pull them channel cats up, they wrap that line a lot, they abuse that line, and if you're fishing lighter line, a lot of times you grab them. They were breaking the line on me because of the abuse. So 17-pound test is very durable. I don't have to change my leader that often. 
So basically, I got my line. So I want a leader. And I want a leader that's going to be anywhere um, from 16 inches to maybe 24 inches, OK? So I come up here. Here's the length of my leader. Yeah, that looks good. I cut my line, all right? I've already, I'm sorry, before I cut my line, I tie a swivel to the end of it. Now I rotate that. I reach up here to the length of the leader, cut it. I've already got my swivel here. I just rotate it, tie my swivel on, so my leader's already made. All right? Before you tie that swivel back into your line, it saves you from getting in the tackle box and pulling out leader material, that's all. It's just a little trick, save you a little time. Before you tie that swivel on there, you want to slide up an egg sinker, okay? Or you can use a team catfish sinker slide. I like the egg sinker for channel cats. Most of the time, I'm fishing a quarter ounce to a three quarter ounce, depending on depth and current. Team catfish sinker bumper, all right? This egg sinker's lying around hitting that knot. Put that sinker bumper on there, it's gonna protect that knot, all right? You've got your leader. To the end of your leader, I'm fishing a number four treble hook, all right? And again, I like the bleeding bait hook. If you buy the product, the team get the sun impact, they're gonna tell you number six trouble, that's fine. I prefer a number four. The other thing, go ahead and pitch your barbs down. If you're gonna catch enough fish, you don't have to worry about that. It's easier to get them out when the barbs are pinched. Now, how do you fish the sudden impact, all right? We said it's a fiber bait, so it's got fibers in it. Get yourself a paint stick, cut it in half, cut a V in one end, you got two sticks. After you use it, you're gonna find it gets all moldy from being wet. So now I use an aluminum stick, grind a little V in there. This is easier to clean too at the end of the day. All right, put that on the treble hook, dip it into your side knit pad, take your paddle, twirl that fiber bait around it a little bit so that you got a little glob on there. Take that bait and throw it out there. And in Pennsylvania, we're allowed three rods per person. So I typically fish a minimum of four. Once I locate fish, we'll put six rods out. And it's everything I can do to keep them baited up. You're in current, the, the, the swifter the current, the faster the fiber bait's gonna wear off. The general rule, remember, general rules are on a goal. General rule, once I have those fish located and I've got four rods out there, if you're not bit in 10 minutes, you need to move. Go find fish because if, if, you're, on, if you're on fish, you're going to be bit. Our record's 36 seconds. I was doing this seminar yesterday and there was a gentleman here who's doing a lot of this. I said, you fish sudden impact? He says, absolutely. I said, what's your record? He said, 10 seconds. So, that's faster than we've been bit. But he said, yeah, it might be 10 seconds. So once you have those rods out and you're located on fish, an easy way to tell if it's been out there too long, if it's not getting bit, all right? Five minutes, bring it in, put new fresh bait on it. But if it's not getting bit, just bring it in. If you have a little bit of fiber on there, you can still catch fish, but I go ahead and freshen it up anyway, all right? Every time I bring it in, just freshen it up and put it back out there. So that is the fiber bait. So Deep Catfish also has a bait if you're fishing lakes or ponds. It's called Secret 7. You don't have current, so then you want to fish something like a dip tube. Okay? Same deal, stick it into your bait, use a paddle, put all that bait in there, and then it'll dissipate out. The bait dissipating away from your hook is not a bad thing because it will suspend, the particles will suspend, and all it's doing is creating a chum slick. I was so impressed with this bait, I called Jeff Williams up at Team Catfish and I said, Jeff, this bait's so good, would it make sense to use it in a jump pot? He said, it'll work, but why do you want to wait and call the fish to you? He said, you've experienced it, you know, move around a little bit, and if you don't act the fish, you don't have to wait for them to come to you. You find a couple fish, you'll be busy, all you need to do, so. I thought about it, we don't do it, it's not necessary. The, the dip bait that they have is the Secret 7. We talked about the bait tube. 
You can use them with a J-hook, or you can put a treble hook on that dip tube as well. Gino cats, they got a very strong jaw, not teeth, if you feel like sandpaper. But when they grab you, if you thumb them, they're gonna make you say, mama, please, because they will squeeze you hard. I would much rather put my hands in a 30-pound flathead than a 10-pound channel cap. They, their jaws are that strong. So, and a lot of times, it's hard to get their jaws open, okay? So this is a, 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 a jaw spreader. You pick it up for less than five bucks at Bass Pro, all right? You just slide that in their mouth, rotate it, it opens the mouth. It's easy to get the hook out. The other thing for taking pictures, uh, this is the best catfish gripper. <laughs> well, actually, multi-species gripper. We use it for everything. Musky, walleye, catfish, everything. This is the team catfish gripper. And it's got a rounded edge here so that when we're holding a 30-pound fish, where those metal blades that I used to use uh, could damage their jaw or their lips, you put 30 pounds in here like this, that's pulling on it and can hurt that lower jaw. So we use these now. Great for, for clients to be able to hold their fish, get pictures with them, and uh, again, get that trouble hook out there without any problems. Channel cats are gonna bite in the daytime, which is great, they'll bite at night, so you can always catch them. Uh, the uh, smaller fish are gonna be more related to the current, and the larger fish are gonna be more related to slacker water. But they will move up in the current as well. But uh, they, again, they're, they're very prolific in the Susquehanna, Juniata. Uh, it's a great thing to get the kids a lot of action on. So I highly recommend you get them out there. Um, when I'm done here, I'll answer any questions on bass fishing, channel cats, flatheads, whatever. I'm getting short on time, so I'm going to roll into the flatheads. The flatheads, um, up to about two years ago, um, the Fish Commission wanted you to kill them, right? That's no longer the case. And I, I like to think we had a major part to play in that. I got so tired of seeing people stab fish, throw them on the bank, throw them on a rock, and not use them in any way. And when you ask them about it, well, the Fish Commission wants us to kill those fish. All right? So about three years ago, when we were having all these meetings on the bass fishing, and prior to going to catch and release, we had a meeting on the bass fishery, and then before we dismissed, I asked if, if I could make a few comments. So I made comments on the walleye fishery, which I still think we need to change our career limit. That's another fight. And I talked to him about the flathead, saying, look, I think we ought to create a trophy fishery here. We've got clients that fish with us now who used to go to Santee Cooper, and now they fish with us because they catch just as big a fish here, and they don't got a driveway down there. Well, you'd have thought I was sitting at that table with a third off. From the outdoor writer, to the biologist, to the other guides, they thought I was nuts, all right? Well, fast forward, I get the opportunity to take the president of the Fish Commission out, Bob Bachman, get to take him out in the river to try to show him what I'm telling him. So the Lord blessed that trip. We got the rods out there. Rod goes, Bob gets it, he's bringing it in, lands it, 20-some pound fish. Before we get done taking pictures, the next rod goes. He's bringing that fish in, got a 20-pounder laying at our feet, he brings it in. At that point in time, it was the largest flathead we had ever caught. It was 38 pounds, 5 ounces. Dude, <laughs> the Lord blessed again, kind of duplicated the same thing. John's got a 20-some pounder. Dave wasn't with me, John killed that fish. I'm not killing that fish, release it. So, they're a great, great, great fish to catch. They're a lot of fun. And we can talk more about what they eat and stuff like that. I just don't have the time now. So anyhow, they no longer promote the killing of flatheads. They're a lot of fun to catch. Different gear, obviously. We're catching flatheads. Uh, our largest is uh, 3915. We haven't broke the 40 pound barrier yet. Last year at a tournament, there was a 47 pounder caught. The state record's 48.6. We look for that to be broken here in the near future. Fishing the team catfish Thundercat. This is a one-piece rod. I like one-piece rods. It's got a lot of backbone to handle those big fish. Um, our longer rods, I'm comfortable with a seven foot to seven foot six. Um, I'm fishing 65 pound tug of war braid. Okay, back to the rig again. We've got a leader. All right, above the above the, the swivel, I'm going to put a sinker slide. Now there's various sinker slides on the market. 
I like the team catfish. It's got a great wide gap here, so I can use various types of sinkers. Uh, I can use the disc sinker. It's got that little wire uh, circle on it to hook it. Or I can use this type of flat sinker where you need a wider gap, and the team catfish uh, sinker slide works for that. I want a flat sinker so that it's not rotating as much in the water. So get it down to the bottom so it's not adding line twist and it's not rolling down a river. Again, you want the sinker bumper, Team Catfish sinker bumper. Why? To protect that knot. This particular rig is something I had worked on. This is like the fourth version. I always have, I call it my bobber rig. I always have this in the water, even if it's clear water, okay? Basically, I take, uh, I take a, a bobber, take the spring out of it, take the guts out of it. I run a drill bit through it that's big enough so the braided line, 65 pound braided, 65 pound braided line, I'll get through it. I drill a hole in the bobber. I put three BBs in, experimented with one, two, settled on three. Epoxy it shut. I'm using live bait, anywhere from three to eight, nine inch baits, channel cats, ball fish, suckers, chubs, sunfish, anything of that nature. This is a sunfish, here's the dorsal, here's the nose. Come about an inch behind it, go about three quarter inches deep, bring it through the back of the fish, all right? Always check your hook, get that scale off of there. Now, that, that fish is on there, and he's always turning, trying to face up river, all right? Into the current. Every time he does that, and he's turning, he's making that rattle go, okay? So in muddy water, the least optical conditions, those catfish through their whiskers, through their olfactory senses, they're gonna smell, all right? The other thing they're gonna do is vibration, and this is it, all right? Even in clear water, I got one of these bottle rods, I just drop it right beside the boat. My other rods are out the back and the other side, all right? Catching fish. If this rig starts to catch more fish, it's only one rod, but if it's got two fish and the other rod's got six fish, percentages says, the fish just told me, put another rattle out there, so I'll do so in clear water. If it's muddy water, I might start with four bobber rods and two clear rods, okay? Fishing anywhere from a five to nine odd hook, uh, J hooks or circle hooks. Um, if you are, I like fishing J hooks. If the fish are aggressive enough and the clients are good enough to get them because you're getting bit, set the hook. If they can't drive the hook home, we're having trouble, I'll go to a circle hook. The thing with a circle hook is, we use this in Alaska for halibut as well. A circle hook comes down at the shank, the point turns around and goes back towards it. If you go to set the hook on a circle hook, all right, like you do a J hook, boom, that pulls right out of the fish's mouth. You got to real slowly, and it's hard to get used to, especially if you're a bass fish. Real slowly, as that rotates, now it's got the fish in the mouth and the jaw, all right? But if you pull it, you're gonna, you're gonna pull right out of his mouth. All right, one more quick thing to show you, and then I'll, I'll take any questions. It's a Snella hook, all right? This is so simple. All you gotta do is remember, okay? Through the eye of the hook, towards the point of the hook, always. Eye of the hook to the point of the hook. Bring it through, all right? This tag end, you don't want it real long, because it'll foul your hook. Pull that tag end back to the bend of the hook. All right, just like that. Wrap it eight times, simple. If you got a little careless and you got gaps in that, push it up, pull it a little tight. Always, through the eye of the hook, to the point of the hook. You're done. If we're netting a fish out one side of the boat and I've got to lift a 20 pound flat in the boat, I have no worries about that knot. If I haven't convinced you to fish sudden impact and you're fishing chicken livers, gizzards, and stuff like that, all right, you put that hook on there and you always have a problem with the bait coming off the current, just push that line back through that eye, creates a little loop, put your meat on there, on the hook, put the excess in there, draw it tight, now you've got your meat hooked in there that way. Okay, any questions, quickly? Yes, sir. What do the fly next Good question. What do flatheads eat? Flatheads primarily eat live bait, all right? I said I'm fishing four to eight, nine inch baits. Um, they like fall fish, chubs. We've used channel cats. 
We use sunfish more than anything because it's easier for us to get them. You can buy them two, two fifty a piece. Uh, we go out. I have a bait maker, okay, and my bait maker is my wife. So we get out, rod and reel, and we go catch our bait. It's a lot of fun. Biggest thing is you got to be able to keep your bait alive. People sometimes put them in their live well and run it. Well, that aerator, that circulating water is creating heat and friction. Get yourself a Mr. Bubbles, keep them in a cooler. They'll stay cooler longer. I can keep fish up to two weeks in that cooler. I just change my water twice a day. Don't worry about feeding them because the more you feed them, the more they go, the more money you got to deal with. Any other quick questions? Okay, coming up is Mr. Penrod and his group. They're going to talk to you about bass fishing, I believe. Um, I'll hang around for any questions you like. I'd like to encourage you to do two things if I could. Number one, take your kids in the outdoors. Whether it's your child, a grandchild, or a friend or neighbor, get them in the outdoors, hiking, camping, fishing, I don't care, bike riding. Get them in the outdoors, get their faces out of these electronic screens. Second thing I'd like to encourage you to do, no matter what your political affiliation is, please support our troops. We got men and women leaving their families, going overseas, losing lives, losing limbs. And they're doing it so we have the freedom we have in this nation. So please support our troops. My name's Rod Bates. Thank you for your time. Be blessed. Have a great day.